Hey everybody, welcome back. And now we're ready to go ahead here and finalize our model. And to do that, we're just simply going to be using some alphas here um, to go ahead across the body, uh, just to add a little bit more detail on the body. Um, also a little bit more detail here on the neck. Okay, so uh, we'll just make sure that we have our standard brush selected. Uh, we're gonna come down here and just select an alpha so let's try this Alpha 58. Um, the intensity here is we can start off at 25 um, and then just check and see what uh, will happen here. So that's probably going to be a little bit um, too intense and there's not enough detail in there. So let's go ahead and subdivide the sub, um, subdivision level 6 here. Okay, We're going to take our spray, turn this to Z sub. And we need to take our intensity here down to, um, we'll go ahead and try five. And you can see where um, that's going to give us a little bit of detail. We can probably up this maybe to seven. And we'll just slowly try to capture these in. Okay. And I'm trying not to get too much on the neck and if you want you can always take your uh, smooth brush and smooth it back a little bit um, just trying not to do too much okay so we'll go ahead and just put a little bit of wrinkling um, on the body here okay And you'll notice I'm just working my way um, across the body here. Just trying to add a little bit of wrinkling. Okay, go ahead and smooth that out. So let's go ahead and um, do the same thing here for the neck. If we want, we can always come in here and use a different alpha. just spray across the neck here Let's smooth that out as we go okay zoom out here okay so I think that that looks okay and that's um, fine with me if I zoom in here uh, just to make sure that I get all the parts on the neck okay so that looks fine okay so this looks fine um, and good for pretty much the model uh, but what we want to go ahead and do now is I want to make sure that I go ahead and save this um, so that you guys actually have this sculpt as well um, what we want to do is at least have a presentation presentation technique here okay and to start off to do this um, just select the material that you um, are going to be happy with uh, presenting your model so you know a lot of people tend to use the the blend inside of ZBrush um, I'm gonna go ahead and use just the basic material here okay and we're going to go ahead and set up some light information to go ahead and render this out through our BPR render. Uh, this way we can then take the images in, in the Photoshop and comp them back together. Okay, so to do this we're just simply going to come over here and start with our light. Okay, so we can go ahead here and place this. And if we want to, uh, we're going to go ahead and hit BPR, which is just the shift R. Uh, and we can simply just start rendering out how this image is going to work. Okay. So we'll go ahead here and create another light. If we wanted to. Hit BPR and see how this is going to work. Okay. You can always take the intensity down. 
Okay. And we can come in here and create light caps as well. I'm not going to change the background or anything. I'm just simply going to leave this uh, grayish background. And to get that background, all I simply did was just change the color in my uh, color palette simply by holding down the space bar, selecting a color, and then coming in here and creating the background from that color. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a light cap here. We'll go ahead and create a new light. And you're going to see where that light slowly changes. You can also change the strength if you want to. And we'll hit shift R to see how this works. Okay. Let's take a look here at the front of the model. Okay, so I'm gonna want another light here that's gonna um, be shining underneath of the character. I'm going to turn this intensity down just a little bit. Uh, the shadow bias I'm going to change um, down as well because I don't want uh, a whole lot of shadow for this model. Okay, We'll go ahead and create another light source. We'll take this one. And the light source that's currently selected is indicated by the little red dot that you can see here. So I want to try to get this uh, underneath. Go ahead and hit Shift R to render that out. Okay, so that's looking okay. And we'll just go ahead and change the shadow intensity here down. Um, I think that'll be it for that. We're going to jump in here and let me go ahead and just move this over. I'm going to take my render settings and just throw these over. Uh, onto the right side here. Okay, for our render properties, I'm going to turn the details up here to three. I'm going to grab the ambient occlusion, the soft RGB, the soft Z. Um, you can always use the depth cue if you want to. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and use that. Render passes. I don't really want um, any of the render passes here. Um, it, this really isn't um, going to affect what I'm going to be doing inside of Photoshop because I'm just simply going to be copying uh, the ZBrush viewport here. I'm going to turn the sharp up to 100 and that S picks up to 7 there. Okay, The shadow here I'm going to change the strength down to a very low limit. Uh, our ambient occlusion, I want it up. The rays I'm going to change to about 1500. Um, anything over 1500 is just going to really slow down. Uh, the size here for the anti aliasing I'm going to change to 6. The super sample I'm going to change all the way up to 4. Uh, let's go ahead here and take a look at this. So you can see where the BPR rendering here is going to take a while to kick through. And that's just simply because the the render settings are um, fairly high there. Okay, so that looks good. Uh, and now what I want to make sure that I do is just cut this anti-aliasing in half. And I have the button here. Or you can always use the shortcut of Control-0. Um, go ahead and do that. And you'll see that the model gets smaller. But this cuts our anti-aliasing in half. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and scale this up real quick. Just making sure that I um, don't capture uh, the white outline here. Let's go ahead and hit Shift R to render this out. And this just takes a little while to go ahead and run through the um, rendering. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while that runs through. Alright, so now that that has uh, gone ahead and run through, uh, what I can simply do is just hit Control O and print screen on your keyboard, and that's going to copy the image. I'm going to go ahead here and open Photoshop. And this will just take a second or two to load. 
as you can see here I'll just simply create new and it's going to come in at uh, 1280 by 720 I'll go ahead and hit control V to paste that in there I'm going to go ahead here and jump back the ZBrush I'll go ahead and grab a side view of this character and I'll hit shift R to render this out and we're doing this to make sure that we have um, everything right um, and also we just want to make sure that um, say if you're working in a production pipeline you're gonna have something to show uh, your lead so it would either get approved or uh, some changes would have to be made so this is just basically a presentation technique a very very simple presentation technique because the full um, end rendering would would obviously happen inside of Maya and that's really where the meat the material uh, changes and updates would really take place okay so now that we have the side here I am just going to go ahead and hit Control Alt Print Screen again, and I'll jump into Photoshop here. I'll go ahead and paste that in, and maybe we'll go ahead and grab a three-quarter view here. And I'm going to actually have to scale that down a little bit there. Okay, go ahead and hit Shift R on our keyboard again. and you can see that that's rendering out uh, at any time if you wanted to stop it you just simply have to hit the uh, um, the escape button on your keyboard and you can see that this doesn't really take um, that much time but it will take a minute or so to go ahead and render out since our settings are fairly high okay so now that that's uh, rendered out I'm gonna go ahead and hit control alt print screen on my keyboard to copy that image jump back to Photoshop here I'll we'll go ahead here and paste that in okay now you can see that we have uh, all three of our views um, you can use any one of those views that you want um, as many as those views that you want you so you can have you know 20 different views if you wanted to and we're just simply going to take our uh, lasso tool we're going to drag around our model trying not to capture any of that white line there just being careful we'll come up here to select inverse we'll go ahead and delete everything off we'll go ahead and delete uh, hide that layer we're going to go ahead and draw it on another lasso here. Same thing, select inverse, delete everything off of that image. Select our third layer here. We'll simply draw one more lasso. Just trying to not capture that white. Select inverse. We'll go ahead and delete everything off, okay? And then we'll just simply move him over, turn him back on. And we'll go ahead and turn that one back on. And the key here is going to uh, being to get all of this fit, okay? So we can just come in here to image size. Uh, the width is, is fine. We probably are going to have to change the height here. The 1080 and you're gonna see where the width is going to change as well okay so this is still gonna be uh, just not large enough uh, we should be fine here okay so we'll just select all three of these um, things I'm just trying to get that top image to actually fit a little better so I can just simply come in here to rotate maybe and scale him down a little bit just to make sure that he's going to fit inside of this image and 
trying just to make sure that he will fit for sure. Okay. And we can go ahead and shift select all three of those, hit control E, so they're all gonna be one layer. And then we'll go ahead and create a new layer, which is gonna be our background. Come up here to color fill. And we'll just simply select the color from one of those images. We'll hit OK. And you're going to see where that uh, image gets colored and image gets filled. But you can see here uh, right at the bottom where we have a little bit of white, which is from that line inside of uh, ZBrush's perspective workflow or work view. So we have to select that. And I'll just have to draw out a lasso here around that. Okay, and we'll just simply come in here to fill, hit OK, and there you can see where that gets taken away. Okay, so now this is um, good enough to go ahead and show for your presentation, and if I wanted to, I'll just go ahead and select those two layers. Just make sure that the image size is going to be large enough, so I'll change it to like 3250, so it's uh, fairly large in terms of the actual resolution and you can just simply go ahead and save this um, I'll give you guys this image as well uh, which will be in the project folder for it um, but that's a way that we can go ahead and create small creatures inside of ZBrush uh, fairly quickly uh, in the next part of this tutorial which will be module 2 we will come back and we'll go ahead and create a uh, full character inside of ZBrush and that character will be uh, mainly for animation purposes inside of Maya. And so uh, come on back and we'll begin doing that.